obviously. So this time we're going to look at ocean floor features. Um, we talked yesterday about like how the ocean was explored. Um, your assignment has been the ocean exploration video. And so this is just kind of expanding on that a little bit and going with, um, you know, what the ocean floor actually looks like. So it goes along with, um, oh, the plate tectonics we were talking about, how the plates move, and that adds a lot into um, the shape of the um, bottom of the ocean in general. So if we were to take the water off of the ocean, and I really kind of like this picture because it shows what it would look like. It would look really weird. So if we took the water off, we would have the continents raised up high and then all of these features underneath. So we'd have, this, this would obviously be where a plate boundary would be, and then we'd have these continental plates, but we'd have lots of other ridges and dips and hills and um, trenches all of these different features. So the bottom of the ocean isn't just flat. And I know we mentioned this yesterday. There's going to be a lot of irregularities in the ocean floor. It's very um, diverse and that's going to allow for lots of different animals and a lot of different organisms to survive. There's going to be a lot of diversity because there needs to be a lot of different variations. Different animals are going to live in different places. Just like on the surface of the earth, different animals live in different places. You can't have everything living in the same place in the ocean. You can't have everything living in the same place on the surface of the earth either. Who would think of it without water though? So the ocean floor consists of the continental margins, ocean basin, basin and mid-ocean ridges. We talked about that a little bit yesterday. So these are like the main divisions of the ocean. So the um, continental margins is here, as it would suggest, the margin of the continent where the continent is sloping down. Even that can be divided. We've got the continental shelf, the slope, and then the trench. And a lot of that, again, is dealing with the plates. So we have the um, ocean plate that is going down underneath the continental plate. And because the ocean plate is less dense than the continental plate, it's going to go down and underneath the heavier, denser continental plate. And that's where these trenches are formed. In fact, that's where the Mariana Trench is formed. The Mariana Trench is the deepest trench in the ocean. And that is going to be the dip deepest place of the ocean because that plate is going underneath the continental plate. So it makes the deepest parts of the ocean. And that's right along these um, continental margins. Then we have the mid-ocean ridges, which are these um, parts here where the plates are being formed. And that's that uplifting of the plates. And it's basically like new ocean floor. And then the ocean basins are these plate or these parts here in the middle. They're mostly going to be kind of the flatter parts, but even those parts aren't super flat because they're still going to have some variation to them as well. Now this is in Google Classroom, so you don't have to write this down. Um, but the Pacific Ocean crust is plunging under the continental crust, and it does have a lot of volcanoes. The Atlantic is not associated with continental boundaries, so there are not as many volcanoes. So here is kind of an example of like the Atlantic, and it's there's no continental boundary here. Do you see how this one is just kind of continuous? And so there's not going to be as many volcanoes here. But this one, it does go under, and that's why we have so many volcanoes along this area. We talked about last semester the Ring of Fire. And the ring of fire was because we have this continent going under, or sorry, we have the um, plate going under the continental plate. And that's going to create a lot of friction 
as that plate subducts and goes under and that subduction zone. And it's also gonna make that really deep trench we just talked about. So a lot's happening in this area. This rock is melting and that's gonna create those volcanoes. And so this is again in that Pacific Ocean area. Now the Atlantic Ocean, again, that plate is continuous and it just kind of gets like not as, um, oh, it gets more shallow here and so the ocean covers it. And therefore we don't have as much, um, we don't have as much volcanic activity in that area. So there, those are the different types of margins that we're seeing. And that's why we have more of a, um, this one's called a passive margin. This one's called more of an active margin because we have more activity and more things going on there. And we, this is another picture that's in Google Classroom. And there is a lot of things that are going on here as well. So again, we can see this more passive area and this more active area where there's a lot going on um, because this one is going under here. We have this oceanic plate going under. We have this deeper trench that's going down because it's going underneath the continental plate, making this really deep area. Um, we have this area that's going up, which is the zone of divergence. So this is new ocean floor being created. Um, you're gonna have a lot of, um, oh, those hydrothermal vents in this area because a lot of underwater volcanoes are happening here and a lot of like um, underwater mountains because this is where new ocean plates are being formed. A lot of upheaval here. So these are gonna be like little underwater hot vents as well, um, which are called sea mounts because you have a lot of activity that's happening here. Then you have these slopes, which are sloping up to the continent where you have kind of these shelves. These shelves are where you're gonna find more of the coral reef area because this is closer to the surface where the sunlight can actually reach. So once you get down these slopes, it's getting away from the sunlight. The sun can't reach those areas, so you're not going to be able to have photosynthesis take place and therefore not be able to have as much life. So the deeper in the ocean, not as much life, not as, I mean, the coral reefs are not, aren't going to happen as much. And then you're just going to be able to have fish and animals that survive in the deep. So on the continental margin, those are the areas that a lot of the interesting things take place because again, that's where most of the sea life is. So you're going to have um, this transition zone between the continent and then the actual like really, really deep ocean part. And so you have the shelf, the slope, and the rise. So here's our coast, think of like a beachy area. Then you have your continental shelf. This would be the place where you know people go swimming, you have your fishing areas, you have your coral reefs, and then you have this slope, which is where it's gonna drop off really deep very, very quickly. And that's gonna lead to this continental rise, which is a much deeper place. There's still gonna be some fishing and some things out in this area, um, but when you get out here, this is gonna be like deep ocean. You're not gonna be able to see the shore from this area. So it goes continental shelf, continental slope, and then the rise. Fox Haney, if you're in the building, please report to class. Fox Haney, report to class. Ocean a little bit 
every now and then you might have a very severe drop off like a cliff but most of the time you're going to have a gradual extension out into the water the shallow extension of the landmass um, the continental shelf also contains the highest amount of benthic life benthic life means like plants and animals that live on the ocean floor benthic means like the ocean floor so this again is going to be like your coral reef areas your um oh where you're going to find the majority of like your sea stars and your sea turtles and just most of the living things in the ocean and a lot of that is because the sun's rays can still get through the water here it's shallow enough that photosynthesis can still take place once you get to the slope you're getting deeper so much more quickly that it's not the sun isn't going to be able to go through the water and photosynthesis isn't going to happen and therefore you're just not going to be able to have as much sea water but the word benthic means like organisms that we live on the So when we get to the continental slope and rise, um, the slope drops off very steep and very sharply, and then um, the the shelf was just a very kind of flat and kind of gradual, but the slope is now very steep. Um, the slope usually begins at about 130 meters deep and then can go up to 20 kilometers wide. Um, the continental rise is right after the slope and it kind of transitions into the deep ocean. So it's much more gradual when you get to the continental rise. Um, the slope is really dramatic. So this is a very dramatic one. And by the time you get to the rise, it's much more gradual. Think of like the, the, ride, or the slope is like a really big hill and then the rise is like a really gradual. Generally, we see this around most of the continents. Um, it's very predictable. We can kind of, using sonar, we can kind of measure where this takes place.
a deep ocean basin. With the deep ocean basin, it's just like the name suggests. Um, this covers over 30% of the ocean surface, or the Earth's surface, and has three characteristics. So the deep ocean basin can be like subdivided and into the abysmal plains, trenches, and the seamounts. So the deep ocean basin is very, very broad. The shelves, the plain, or the slopes, and the rises make up a small portion, but the ocean, base, ocean basin is the majority of the ocean. And um, the abyssal, abyssal plain is flat, deep ocean. Um, it's very featureless because most of it is sediment. So the sediment is really. Um, a bunch of dead stuff that has filtered down through the water and just accumulated there. It's really kind of a powdery, they, they often compare it to ooze because once it gets stirred up, then it's like a cloud that's kind of cloudy in the water, but it doesn't often get stirred up because by the time you get this far down in the ocean, not a lot of things disturb it. Most organisms don't really live this far down in the ocean. Most of them are going to live further toward the surface. But there are some animals that make it this far down into the abyssal, abyssal plain. Um, and this oozing sediment is made up of like dead material, um, organic matter, but also a lot of um, oh, finely ground like shells from mollusks and things like that. And we'll talk a little bit more about what the sediment is actually made of. So the deep trenches are the deepest parts of the ocean, and we, of course we know the Mariana Trench is the deepest one. Um, the Mariana Trench is in the South Pacific, and it is more than 35,000 feet, or almost 6.6 .6 miles deep. So it is deeper than, like if you took Mount Everest and turned it upside down, it would be deeper than Mount Everest. Um, basically, it's a place where one of the continental plate, or sorry, the oceanic plate meets a continental plate and goes down. And so it makes it really, really deep. There's a lot of speculation about the Mariana Trench. Um, if you watched the movie Meg, Meg um, there's an interesting speculation there that I thought was really weird. But anyways, the Mariana Trench, there's been a lot of like exploration, but the immense pressure of all the water above it makes it very difficult. Um, so a sea mount is a mountain rising from the ocean floor. It doesn't reach the surface, so it stays under the ocean. Um, and therefore, it doesn't make an 
island. If it reached above the surface, it'd be an island, but it doesn't, so it stays under the surface. And these are usually formed from underwater volcanoes, and just the underwater volcano cools enough that it just doesn't reach the surface. So they're called sea mountains. But they help shape and give um, texture and form to the ocean. Now the mid-ocean ridges um, is essentially two chains, and there's really, you can see them here, here's one and here's the other, um, of mountains separated by a large depression or rift, which forms the two divergent plates. And this is basically where the, the two plates are beginning, and it starts a new plate, so it's new material flowing up from the mantle underneath and it's causing the new ocean to be created and then pushed outwards. But that is what the mid-ocean ridge is. And again, it's very obvious, like here's one going this way and here's another one right over. Some of them do reach above the ocean surface and this creates islands above the surface. Um, assist with sea floor spreading and again this hot magma that's pushing up and that's why we get these underwater volcanoes and especially like their hydrothermal vents. Um, the hydrothermal vents are very interesting for study. They are spewing a lot of hot chemicals into the water. These hot chemicals are um, the only other place in the world that it's not photosynthesis, it's something called chemosynthesis. And bacteria can take these chemicals and use it as a form of energy. So we know photosynthesis, we learn this in biology, where plants take sunlight and turn it into energy, while bacteria take the chemicals that are spewing out of these vents and turn 
that into a form of energy as well. And so there can be whole little communities of life around these vents because the bacteria use the chemicals as a form of energy and it's called chemosynthesis. And so mm -hmm. we've got these bacteria, and then we've got tube worms and then we've got like these little crabs and then we've got like a whole little ecosystem around these vents. Um, <coughs> which wouldn't be possible without the bacteria turning that into energy. So it's kind of cool. There's a lot of research around that. It's the only other type of energy con convergent um, aside from photosynthesis. So another picture in Google Classroom for you. This one again just showing the different details we talked about, the trenches, the seamounts, the middles and ridges, the slopes, the shelves, and all of that. Um, there might be a picture, there probably will be a picture, um, I can't remember what I put on the test honestly, but there probably be a picture, something similar to this, that would have labeling that you would have to label for the test. So make sure you are comfortable with a picture similar to this for the test. Um, be able to label like a shelf and a slope and um, abyssal plane, those kinds of things. All right, um, so the old oceanic crust is driven into the mantle and melted beneath uh, because it's less dense than the continental crust, which is more dense, and this is a pro process called subduction. So this is a subduction zone. So as it's going underneath, the continental crust, it is creating all those volcanoes we talked about before. So it's going underneath the mantle, super hot, and it's creating a lot of uh, friction and heat and just basically melting that stone down. And then um, as the hot magma rises, it forces the continental plate upwards, forming those coastal mountain ranges. So a lot of times along the coast, you're going to have mountain ranges, and a lot of times you're going to have volcanoes. So especially if you see this along South America, 
here along South America, we've got like this whole mountain range um, along the coast, and you're going to have a lot of volcanoes along that area as well, because this is all a subduction zone. So the basically the ocean crust is ramming into it, and the continental crust is being pushed up in that area. Here's a great example of one thing that happened. Um, when the continents moved, we had India. India basically rammed up into um, Europe and created the Himalaya mountain range. And that is where Mount Everest is. So it created one of the largest mountain ranges in the world. So um, when the Pangaea first broke up, India basically rammed up in there, and that created a huge mountain range with some of the largest kind of roughest mountains ever. So um, this kind of shows how India just rammed up in there. All right, that's all the notes for today. I'm kind of a little bit longer, but we still have some time left to work on our assignment. How are we doing on that assignment? Ocean, what was it? Ocean exploration, building the Pale Mountain. Good for finishing up tomorrow. Okay. okay, so if you have any questions.